Hello, I'm Matt, and this Loxley Quality Time tutorial is to help you with this painting, Kissing Gate from the Cuchillo Collection. If you haven't already watched our Techniques tutorial videos, please have a look at them before starting your project. They give you some valuable information about painting with the quality time range, and help you get the most out of your quality time. This video contains specific information about your chosen painting, but we assume that you are already familiar with the general techniques covered in our tutorial videos. Kissing Gate features just that, a kissing gate. The gate leads into a meadow on a crisp autumn morning, with the sun breaking through the mist revealing the brilliance of the colours in this season. The gate was designed to allow people to pass through but not livestock, and its name comes from the engineering term referring to the fact that the gate merely touches, kisses, rather than having to be securely latched. I'm starting with the sky here, and it's um, quite a small sky, and also it's a very pale sky. There is a video on painting skies, a separate tutorial, which we recommend you to have a look at. And I've mixed up here mainly white with a very small hint of green. And I'm brushing horizontally just across the sky. Nice gentle brush strokes. And I'm actually painting behind the trees, sort of over the where the trees are. The outlines will show through, but you can see where I'm going over the trees. The sky can be seen through them like this. I'm now painting the field and I've mixed a little bit more green so it's a slightly darker shade of green and again I'm working behind the trees here and round the gate post, the fence it's important not to paint up where the gate is so I'm just working my way around these areas in horizontal lines as much as you can some areas like this you have to do vertically but you can always just finish them off horizontally like this just adding a bit more white in the mix for this left hand side of the meadow. You'll see from the photograph that it's paler in this corner and then it can go darker again towards the foreground. This is the first stage, stage one. I'm just filling in these gaps. I think that's everything on this meadow. So I'm just going to add little bits of yellow. This is just pure yellow, not mixed with anything. At the top here, this is where the sun shines through on the trees there and down here. This is before I put any of the greenery on. I'm just just to emphasise the areas where the sun is catching the leaves and across these trees here. Because yellow is quite a pale colour, you don't have to be so... you can be more free with it. So I've, I'm going to paint the trees on the horizon. I've mixed mainly white with a little bit of green and a little bit of red. And this has actually come out more red than I was expecting. Red is a very powerful colour and it's sometimes difficult to get just right but it's okay it's gonna I'm gonna carry on with this and then on my second coat just add it a bit more green it should be quite interesting really to see how it turns out because you'll see from your picture that colors vary a little bit on the horizon here so if we can get different tones it should be quite an interesting experiment really so I'm just working away across trying not to go onto the field and also keeping off the sky and it can add a bit more white to the left here where it's paler where the sun's shining in like so. so. I'm going to paint some of the ground here and I'm going to mix up brown using red and green and then adding a little bit of white and you can vary the shade of brown by um, using different amounts of, of the red and green and I'm also adding a bit of yellow just to make it more interesting and the varied. I'm just doing the random patches because they'll be filled in with the autumn leaves in between. It doesn't matter which direction the brush strokes but if you vary them then it makes it look more interesting. So I'm just Filling in these patches like this. It'll look very patchy at this stage, but it's fine. That's how it's supposed to be. Coming in with slightly different brown here. It just makes it look more interesting. Added a bit more yellow here as well. So it's even lighter, my brown now. And this, picking out the bridge. And I'm going to run in the direction of the wood. Painting around where these leaves are going to be. And around the yellow. And then while I've got the brown, I'm going to do the, um, the gate and the fence as well. And this is... Um, without adding the whites this time and the yellow so it's a darker brown just of the green and red but I am going to add a little bit of yellow just to make it paler just a little bit paler so it's less intense and then on the fence I'm going to paint around this arrow always finish up in the long direction the way the grain runs on the wood it looks more real it's fine to paint across like that but then just finish it off in the direction of the grain on fences it always runs in the, the long long length so like this, this is the longest length is this way here. Just using the tip of the brush, 
Nice gentle strokes and not getting it on the field behind, painting around the tree bits here. Just mixing a bit more yellow for this bit down the side. It's a different shade of brown. So you're always finishing up in the direction, one direction around the ivy here. So you just carry on till you've done all of this, these fences. Okay, so I'm just working on these branches now and I've mixed up using red and green. No two mixes of brown are the same, but that's okay because um, trees are all different as well. So it looks more natural because every tree is slightly a different shade of brown. Just working along these branches with the very tip of your brush. So you're doing as fine a line as possible and leaving little gaps for where the vegetation would be. I'm just putting in these. It's like a suggestion of branches in places. Don't have to see the whole branch because it's going to be covered up with the tree. Keep your brush loaded so that it doesn't run dry. You can take as long as you want over this, there's no rush. Study your photo to see where the branches go. It doesn't matter if they don't follow exactly the same shape, it all looks natural anyway. So I'm just going to add some green into these areas here, these green leaves. You can add some yellow in just to vary it a bit, getting a different shade. And where this ivy is growing up the fence. And again, it doesn't matter what too much what order you're doing it in. Pick out some of these green bits. Then I'm going to take a break and do some of this floor area. I'm going to do the forest floor. I'm going to use yellow with different amounts of red mixed in. This is like for the autumn leaves, so it doesn't matter which. If you do them like different angles, the brush marks, each one different, it'll look more real. Like the crispy leaves, all randomly on the floor here, filling in some of these white areas. The more variants of the colours, the more real it looks like the autumn leaves, building up like layers of the paint. Some darker red in here. I'm just doing these leaves. You can put the paint on quite thickly so it looks like the crispy autumn leaves here. And you can even just mix it almost on the paper so you've got yellow and red on your brush and it gets these interesting effects. Beautiful autumn colours. Just keep adding different amounts of yellow and red and go around these yellow areas so you've got the contrast. So I'm now going to work on the um, leaves, the vegetation here, and I'm using green mix with different amounts of yellow. Never be afraid to keep the colours pale because they often mix darker than you imagine. There is a one of the technique videos on painting foliage and trees which gives you more information and I'm using the tip of my brush here so that it looks like the individual leaves, leaving some of this yellow showing which is important because that's where the sun's catching it. You can just vary the green, leaving some bits of sky showing through. You can see the individual leaves appearing. For the red leaves, I'm using mainly yellow with just small amounts of red mixed in. And again, using the edge of the brush, just the tip of the brush, to pick up these individual leaf shapes. And then bits of sky showing through again. And use some just with pure red, pick out some of these leaves. It's like a patchwork of different shades of red and orange and yellow. So I'm just touching up these um, that yellow sign and the yellow arrow, just a bit of yellow paint there. And then the yellow is really useful for just filling in these little gaps between where the colour didn't quite meet. It can be quite free with yellow because it's not a bold colour. Just filling in these areas here, getting over the other bit like that. And it sort of keys it all in together. So I'm now going to um, be doing stage two. I'm going to start off with these trees on the horizon and I've mixed up white with a small amount of red and a bit more green than I would have done just to compensate for the mixing too much red on the stage one. And I'm just putting this on selectively so it's not covering the whole area so I can get some varying shades in these trees here. I'm going to add a bit more white to my mix on the left here where the sun's shining through like so. I'm going to do stage two on the meadow and I'm starting across here on the left just with pure white and brushing that in where the sun comes in at the corner there and then I'm going to be mixing it with green and yellow as it gets further across the field to the right using plenty of yellow and just gently brushing the not heavy brush strokes but just nice and gentle going finishing up horizontally and just blending it in with the white that's coming into the meadow there. Slightly more greener across to the right, just gives it more atmosphere if it's two different colours, like the white coming in here. You can see the morning mist it's filling in these gaps, painting round the gate. You can make it even darker, more green towards the foreground here. Just adding little patches of slightly darker green, just to make it look more interesting. So I'm just going back in on stage two on these leaves here, just with pure green and then I'll be using pure red on the left. 
just picking out some of the darker leaves again just using small brush strokes so you're leaving actual brush strokes in like that and i'll just do some red across this side this gives it more character across the tree the branches so i'm now going to um do stage two on the fence and gate i've mixed up another brown using um red and green slightly more ready than the first mix but that's okay leaving this area where you see the shadows here just you see the two different browns i'm being a bit selective slightly different shades of wood and again i'm running in the direction of the grain which is important it's just giving it more character and depth you can add the yellow if you want a slightly lighter brown just try and keep to the gate parts just work your way across so i'm now i'm really pleased i've got my picture to this level and i'm going to do stage three which are the shadows and um, because the foreground here is quite dark I've mixed my shadow paint and I've put a little bit of water with it so it's not so intense. I'm going to build up these shadows around here. This really adds dimension, makes it come to life. There is a one of the technique tutorials on painting shadows which gives you more detail on this. And shadows under the footbridge here. So I'm picking out some of these areas under the foliage just to give it more character. I'm now on stage four, the highlights, and also at the same time I'm using a bit of the white just to brush in some lines here. This is just pure white, which I'm brushing into the horizon. And then you can see the mist. Looks like the mist, you can feel it then. Along with shadows, highlights are what bring out the um, depth of the picture. Give it another dimension. You can almost breathe the autumn air now as this picture's coming to life. I'm just picking out these areas where the sun's catching on the gate very fine lines and you need small amounts of white there is um the technique video on painting highlights which gives you more information i've enjoyed my painting i hope that you get the most out of your quality time goodbye